from my post yesterday, uh, the task for this week is going to be to document um, the process of how I go into my 1550 challenge. Um, so every model, my weeks uh, is structured, obviously, with as like a seven-day time frame, which I'm splitting into different actions. Um, started with day one, which is something we're going to be taking a deep dive on today, which is the process of uh, ideation and research. Then on day number two, I do the initial setup and planning. Three and four are usually days that are reserved for building, coding, debugging, and 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 all that. Uh, on day number five, Fridays, usually polishing design, uh, you know, going through some templates, trying to make the app look nicer. Uh, on day six, final preparations, launching, you know, basically ship it, sharing the app across the web. And then on day seven, uh, which is Sunday, I post on level launched. I do some uh, tracking just to look at the numbers and decide on the next steps, whether that's going to be introducing new features, interviewing power users, or, or you know, just continuing with the new project uh, that I have. Um, so let's start with day one, which is actually my day one for this week. And it's... To today's the day when I would decide what I'm going to build. But before I even decide what I'm going to build, I want to go a little bit into the framework of uh, how I come up with uh, with my ideas. Um, before we even begin, we all know that ideas are important, but they're worthless without execution. So, you know, bear in mind that um, just having an idea is the beginning, not the end of the process. Um, now, the first start I the first thing I start with right is like I gotta figure out where to look at right and um, there's a couple of places that are my go to when it comes to searching for good ideas. Number one is uh, I'm always trying to look to scratch my own edge because um, I want to make sure that I'm building something that I'm passionate about that I like that I would love to have uh, as a tool. Otherwise, my I feel like my retention for the challenge would probably be lower. Um, I would also do things such as look at my bank account history and just figure out, okay, what what's the thing that I've been paying for, right? What's something, what's an app that, you know, cost me $5, $7 a month that I could technically build myself. Um, it's not a my thing. It's more of like a challenge thing, obviously. Um, I look at my search history as well. I look at like, what's been the thing that I've Googled in the past week or so that I've been trying to fix or trying to figure out or trying to find a solution for, right? So a lot of times you're trying to solve your own problems, right? Uh, sometimes I'm just like, I've just exhausted all of those three or I just feel like it's not the right moment to launch a particular idea. Um, I would go and look at um, online databases uh, in search trends. And we're going to go over that too. Um, Sometimes those ideas are too generic, right? I feel like, you know, they're, they're out there, but they're not something, again, that I feel connected to, or I don't feel like they're 100% validated, even though there's, there's a trend line showing that they could be. So then at those points, I would just go to Reddit and just look at uh, subreddits such as side projects, which we're going to go over as well, and then just uh, try and see, okay, this is, this is an idea that resonated with the community is this something that i could be building and then finally uh i'm already at project number 10 this week so there's nine projects that i've built i'm well aware of their uh of, of lack of features um and therefore um some of the projects that i will be building in the future are challenge enhancements like what are the tools that could complement uh the stuff that i've already built um so let's go through the process of like, again, I've been jotting down ideas for a long time. As you can see, this is a document that I've kept before I even discovered that you can build stuff uh, with AI. And then I've went on and kind of listed a lot of the, them in like a sheet that I'm already looking at. So these are mostly ideas that I've had or somebody that I know had or stuff that I've read online about, right? But if you're, if you're like, oh, I don't have any ideas. I don't know where to even start thinking about ideas. There's a couple of databases that I would recommend looking at that I found to be interesting. Well, first one could be like uh, this place idea picker, right? Where, you know, you could uh, just look at, you know, 
different categories or, or, you know, um, subreddits, or like, if you just go to ideas, um, you can see that there's like 20, almost 27,000 of them. Right. And they're kind of already broken down and, and they're showing like monthly revenue potential. You can, uh, check out the details again. It tells you what the features are, what the value proposition is, which is good because of the, the steps we're going to be taking, uh, in the later days. Um, first one being, you know, uh, building project documentation, right? There's also, I mean, it's fairly similar to database again, uh, micro SAS idea.com, um, a bunch of stuff like that, where, you know, you can see revenue potential, um, time to market and whatnot. Obviously I wouldn't focus too much on that because we're using AI to build this. Then there's um, Starter Story, obviously, uh, you know, a place where I would definitely go to look at st look at stuff, you know, there because these ideas are unlike all of these other ones, which are like kind of hypothetical. The ideas that uh, are shared by Pat are um, ideas that are backed by uh, actual interviews he did with founders of these products. So the numbers that you're going to be seeing and the stories you're going to be reading are real stories. So again. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just have to find something that's already out there and maybe make make it simpler or make it more niche or ad adapt it to a different use case. Founder Pal, another tool that I've used in the past just to look at uh, not just ideas, but like it has this interesting AI validator where you would like when you come up with the idea, it would you know tell you um, how what does it think about your idea, which is something sometimes very good because it like opens up, broadens up your horizons on things. Right now, as I said, like you can look at databases, but um, that doesn't mean necessarily that these ideas are successful or that, that this is something people are looking for. If you're like, if you really want to build something that is trendy, you want to go to a, and, and use a website like glimpse, for example, right? Where uh, in, in glimpse, um, you will be able to, uh, find information on, um, what's, what are the things that people are actually searching for, right? So let's say you want to build something in the real estate space, right? Uh, you can actually use glimpse and see what's trending, uh, in it. So move out statement, it has like, uh, uh, a graph, like a chart that, as you can see, has been, uh, having an upward trend for the, pretty much the past five years. I don't even know what this is, right? I just clicked on it, right? So if you're in real estate, you probably know more about it and you can be like, okay, this is interesting. It's a uh, fairly popular, most popular market is the United States. So, you know, maybe that's the way that you can discover things. Or you can just simply say, um, uh, I mean, you can just go to their dashboard. I think that they are listing uh, all the all the things that are... Um, the most popular trends across the board, right? Um, to me, this is not validated market yet. I feel a, a better place to validate things is Reddit because, you know, all of these other tools, you don't know what's going on exactly, but on Reddit, I know exactly that this is mostly or uh, hopefully mostly human generated content. So inside project or, or, or any other subreddit, as you can see, I'm a member of like business ideas, indie hackers, SaaS, side hustle, whatever, you just go to any of them, uh, open the sort options, maybe take like top, uh, and, and you can say not even today, but let's say this week, right? So this week, you know, some people may, a lot of times it's like, uh, these celebration ones, but okay, this, this person just created a website that shows public toilets or, or something like that. Or like, um, I mean, I, I don't know, there, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, like this that you can just look at, okay, this is a great project, for example, universal file converter that may, and he already made money with it. Like this is an ideal project for somebody building with AI. So you take the idea, you're like, huh, okay, I like this stuff, right? And then from there, I go to the next step, which is like, okay, I think I decided what I want to do this week. What makes sense? Again, in my case for this week, I picked a project that falls under this uh, last category we talked about, which is uh, making a challenge enhancement because all I've already built nine projects and none of them have a, any blog posts written except for one, which they kind of hack. So I was thinking about building a, a CMS tool 
that I could plug into my lovable projects and easily like knock out three or four or five blog posts just to get a little bit more pages for every future project that I want to build. So that's something that I came up with, right? Um, for this week, um, speaking of coming up with ideas, uh, you know, I, I've found personally that better ideas come with building, like, and you almost don't want your first idea to be your best idea. Uh, same way you don't want to debut on an NBA game, playing a game seven in the NBA finals. Like that's, you really want to warm yourself up, learn a little bit about the tools, deployment, promotion, or everything really. So, you know, kind of, I even intentionally keep my best ideas for later because I really want to build an audience first that could actually, or would actually want to sign up to use them. Right. Another great thing about ideas and AI is that um, you can always rebuild, uh, you know, start from scratch um, very quickly. Like you can just scrape the project and the idea you've had uh, on Monday and start something completely new on Tuesday, you know, and, and make tremendous progress really quickly. Right. Um, the big, the thing and the big thing that I want to leave everybody with on this video is that you, when you're doing these sort of things, you always want to create a path of least possible resistance, right? So in my case scenario, after I've come up with the idea, I have two ways to go about it. Like the old way that I would do it with was I've, I built this template uh, in ChatGPT where I've, I've, uh, um, you know, kind of uh, trained the model, so to speak, on helping me build a base prompt that contains all the idea parameters, right? That's the old way that I'm doing things. The new way that I'm doing this uh, uh, a process now is using deep research. Obviously, deep research wasn't available when I started the challenge. Now it's kind of something that you can use across Grok or ChatGPT or Claude or Perplexity and allow yourself to learn a little bit more about the subject before you even embark on the journey of building because sometimes just thinking you know what you want to build isn't enough right and and there are better solutions out there so again i've not just trained this so uh, uh, a chat on giving me base prompts i've thought it like of, of about my entire challenge about all the ideas that i've ever had as you can see but in the end as it listed ideas and as we continue to work through it, like as you can see, this is a very long chat. I've thought it how to build uh, a base prompt, right? So one, this is one of the ideas that I've had in the past, still yet to build it, but like basically I have a, a, a chat where if I just say, hey, this is the idea that I have, it knows that it needs to define the, the core statement, the project name, target audience, core features, the tech stack that's going to be used, uh, design preferences, steps to build, and things of that nature, right? Um, you know, and I, I've, again, trained it and trained it and made it like just work and work and work with me on this, right? But I, I found this new approach to be even better. Uh, and that is a, the, the approach of uh, chatting with it from a perspective of like making you do deep research, as you can see on ChatGPT, there's this button here, deep research, you just click there. And this is what I've done. Like I just told it that I want to build a CMS using Lovable and that I want to connect to all of my websites. And I was like, does this need to be an API? Is there something already out there? What does this app need to have? And then a lot of times I really want to spark a conversation. So I would, ask AI what are the questions that I should be asking it before it even starts doing research. And then I explain like, this is approximately what I think it should happen. And these are a couple of tools that I found myself online that I think are similar to what I'm trying to build, right? Do your research and tell me what I need to do. Then AI asked me questions, which was great, right? I answered those questions and then from there, AI just, you know, really gave me a detailed breakdown of how this should look like, how it should work. And, you know, you can then use all of this knowledge, not just to understand the idea better, but also create instructions for AI, uh, which is something that we're going to go through tomorrow because uh, this sort of ends the day one exercise for us.